first. If you could like this video or comment on it, if you like it, I guess. Um, and if you're not already subscribed, if you could do that, it helps me out so much. And I appreciate everybody who has done that already and continues to interact and comment. It is like so much. I feel like I'm, I'm growing well and I like really hope that continues. I'm so excited about it because I am loving doing this. Okay. Guys, this case, um, I first heard about it on a podcast. I think it was called Morbid. Yeah, Morbid. It's two, I think they're sisters that tell stories and I was listening to it and I just could not believe what I was hearing so I started like googling and researching it more and I was like I gotta share this story like it's crazy okay we're talking about Susan Monica today and I feel like a lot of you probably know who she is but if you don't I'm gonna tell you, and let me tell you, she's something. Okay, let's start. I'm rambling. Okay, so Susan Monica was actually born Stephen Buchanan on July 8th, 1948. Um, she was a very intelligent woman. She served in the army during the Vietnam War and then was eventually honorably discharged. Um, and after that, she actually got into engineering and had a very successful career as an engineer. In 1991, so at this point, Susan was like late 40s, she decided that she wanted to have a farm, so she bought a plot of undeveloped woodland area in Weimar, Oregon. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Now, this was like 20 acres of land, but most of it was just foresty areas, um, and Susan had a dream of having a functioning farm. She did what she wanted to do. She ended up building a barn and a house on the land. She had a herd of pigs um, and raised chickens and, you know, it, she had a farm. That's what she had always wanted. She had a farm. And I forgot to say that she officially went, um, underwent her transition from male because she was born male to female after she had gotten out of the army. I meant to say that. Okay. So she also ran a business out of the farm. It was one of those companies that would make iron fences, like custom iron fences. Um, her company was called White Queen Construction and she made the type of fences that would have like, if you've ever seen those iron fences that have like things built into them. So like there'll be horses or cows or like bulls. I've seen bulls. Um, they're actually really, really well done and really cool. But like, lady, I don't want your fence now. Maybe if you weren't a psycho. But not now. I don't want your fence. <laughs> okay. So fast forward to the year 2013. Susan had been living on her farm for 12 years at that point. And she realized that she was going to need some help running things. So she puts an ad on Craigslist for a handyman, Robert Haney. Um, ends up answering her lit ad, ad on Craigslist. Now, Robert was a 56-year-old divorced father of five, and he was at a point in his life where he just enjoyed 
enjoyed um, like the peace and tranquility and quiet of nature. Um, he was actually living in a trailer at this point, like a, a I guess a camper um, that, that he would take from place to pay, place and Susan had told him that he could park his trailer and live on her property and he, she would pay him in cash. So it sounded like this like perfect deal for Robert because he was going to be like out in the wilderness and in the peace and quiet and just, you know, able to like all the things that he was looking for at that point in his life. So for the first several months that Robert was working for Susan all seemed well, like anything that she asked of him, he did, and they seemed to have a very good relationship. Um, even his kids say that at first, like, things were growing great between the two of them. And then, in the fall of 2013, um, so this is about six months after Robert had started working for Susan, his kids noticed that she, like, or th his kids noticed that he was, like, radio silent, which apparently was very odd for their dad, and, like, that he wouldn't have talked to one of his five children was pretty odd, and in December of 2013, they actually all came together and realized that it had been two months since anyone had heard from him. So, they're like, something's going on, and they drive out to the farm to check on their dad, just pay him a visit and make sure that he's okay. However, as soon as they got to the farm, they knew something was wrong. Um, Robert's trailer was still there. His dog was still there. His tools, which is, we you know, how he made a living. It was all still there. And they went and saw Susan, who had this story that Robert had come to her in the fall, back in, like, September, and asked her to watch the dog and said that he had to go take care of something, and then he left, and she never, like, heard from him again. Now, she mentions this phone call that's, that Robert had had, like, she overheard Robert having this phone call where, apparently, one of like somebody in his family had gotten into um, a situation where they were being abused and Robert was the type, like this loving father of five that was going to go fix like whoever was hurting his family, you know. So Susan sort of cites that phone call and says, well, I guess that's what he went to do. Um, now, Robert's children corroborate this phone call and say that, you know, that was a situation that was going on in their family, but they just felt off about, um, the whole, like, Susan in general. So basically, Susan is like, I haven't seen your dad, I just need you to get his stuff and go, but, like, they just, they just felt so weird about it that they weren't going to do that. So they actually just left and went to the Jackson County Sheriff's Office and filed a missing persons report against or for their dad. Um, police go out to the farm and what they find is like shocking. They note in their report that there was like piles of debris everywhere and like tie like it didn't look like a well kept farm like Susan was portraying to like those that knew her around town. Um and that the farm stunk really bad as well. So they brought Susan in for questioning and she tells them, you know, pretty much what she had told the kids that he 
left in September and he hasn't been back. Um, and initially police are like, you know, why would we have any like reason to not believe what she's saying? Like, you know, let's try to track him and see if we can get some movement on his whereabouts. But since he, um, was being paid in cash and was sort of living off the grid. He was almost untrackable. Like, it proved very difficult to track him. However, on in mid-December, they get a hit on Robert's EBT card, which, if you don't know what that is, that is a, um, like, state-issued food stamp card. Um, so they get a hit on this card and it's at a Walmart about 25 minutes away from Susan's farm and police go to the Walmart and they pull the footage and it's Susan using his EBT card at this Walmart. So police go back and they arrest her for like using, you know, theft essentially. And they take her back in for questioning again and her story changes big time and you will learn that this is not the first time that her story changes. It changes pretty much to the end. So police take her in for questioning but while they're there arresting her, they decide to just poke around a little bit and see if they can find anything. So they're walking around and there's two bodies of water on Susan's property. So they're walking around looking at all these piles of debris and one of the police noticed a foot poking out, like sticking out of one of the ponds. And this foot had been severed mid-femur in the middle of a bone. So not even like, you know, it had tendon in the middle of a bone. This foot had been cut apart, um, which is like terrifying. I mean, it's terrifying to cut anybody up, but to like chop or like saw a bone in half is just like insane to me. So... They, uh, they found a foot at her farm, and so they go back and they question her again. And this time, she tells them that one day in September of 2013, um, she had come outside and seen her pigs attacking Robert. Um, she says that by the time she found this situation, Robert was already in pretty bad shape and, like, guts hanging out, and so she put him out of his misery, um, like, just shot him like he was an animal to end it, to end the misery, she says, and then she left him for the pigs to eat. And after a couple of days, she went back, and what was left of his body, she put in trash bags. Now, pigs do eat people. Like, that's a thing. And so, initially, police are like, well, maybe, you know, maybe this happened. But, um, there was evidence to the bone, like, especially that femur bone, that they were, like, sawed in half, that it wouldn't have been an animal. Um, there was some evidence of animal, like, activity, but, like, that's not, like, somebody else, a human, used a tool to tamper with this as well. So the police are like, what the F? And she says that she didn't tell them at first because she didn't want her pigs to have to be put down. You know, that they were, like, unsafe. I guess, like, when you put a dog down that attacks a, a person. I don't know. But wait. In that same interview, 
Susan is sitting there, excuse me, and she asks for a piece of paper. She said that she has more to tell them and she needs to draw a map of her property so that she can like give them the picture. So she draws her property out and right in the middle she draws a big X and she hands it to police and says, this is where you'll find Steve. And the police are like, what? Like, who is Steve? So she goes on to say that Steve Delicino worked for her as a handyman the year prior in 2012. She says that she caught Steve trying to steal some of her guns one day, and they sort of got in a struggle. I guess Steve was fighting her, and in the struggle, a gun went off and shot him, and it was an accident, but then after she accidentally shot him, she shot him two more times to put him out of his misery. This lady's crazy. Then she says that she pushed him into the pigs, the pig pen, um, let them eat him, and then buried him. But freaking wait, because there's more. In that same interview, the same damn day that she's like, yeah, I killed Robert, and I also killed this guy, and here's where you can find him. She tells them, you're going to find like 17 men on the farm, on my property. There's 17, at least 17 men out there. So police start this massive search that lasted three weeks straight where they were just digging holes everywhere on the property and a lot of skeletal remains were found during that search. However, none of them were human. So the only human remains that were found on the farm were those of Robert Haney and then Stephen Delicino. Um, so it's not clear like if she was lying about those other bodies. Most people that you will read about the who, like um, investigators that talk to her or whatever will say that they believe her that um, that she had killed that many people that they may not have found the bodies. Maybe she put them somewhere else but that they believed her. So on January 14th 2013, Monica was charged with two counts of murder for Robert Haney and Steve Delicino. Her case went to trial in April of 2015 and lasted for six days. Now, this case was a circus. Susan kept, like, interrupting the judge over and over again and would make, like, ridiculous requests. Um, she asked if Robert's children could be removed from the courtroom because she didn't want them to hear details of things, like details in the case. Um, and obviously the, the um, judge was like, like that, you don't get to do that. Like, you murdered their dad. They have a right to hear all of this if they want to. She also requested that her pigs be, um, so they were going to be butchered because, not necessarily because they did anything wrong, right? Because these are animals that, um, like you throw meat in there, they're going to eat it, you know? So, but they were going to be butchered because nobody was going to be able to take care of them. They had been raised in a way that it was more vicious, you know.
USDA certified and processed in the within the federal guidelines and like we're not taking this meat that came from pigs who ate humans that you fed them like no that's not happening nobody wants to eat these pigs so um you know i think the pigs were innocent in this i mean they're pigs but they were put down so during the trial um a former cellmate of Susan's named Jordan Ferris um, told the court that Susan had given her a birthday card during their time as cellmates and she had signed it the sweetest murderer in Jackson County. This was before she had, like, you know, she was just accused of murder at this point. Um, Ferris also claims that Susan told her that she had shot Robert on purpose because she um, did not like his advances. He was coming on to her when he was drunk. Apparently, Robert would drink often um, and he was getting aggressive. Susan didn't like it, so she shot him um, and then pushed him into the pig pen for the pigs to eat. So obviously the jury had like no sympathy for this lady. Um, it took them just an hour to find her guilty of two counts of murder. And she was then sentenced to 50 years without the possibility of parole. And so she will spend the remainder of her years in prison. There's, she's not getting out. Is this not the craziest thing you've ever heard? Like, she fed people to her pigs. And not only, like, like she was a, like a veteran, like an honorably discharged from the freaking Vietnam War veteran who fed people to her pigs. I just, like, cannot wrap my mind around mental state that someone would have to be in to do that. I, like, I just, I'm just not there. I can't figure it out. Like, why? Why somebody would do that? Now, in the Morbid podcast, when I was listening to it, they mentioned that the pigs, of course, were put down, but there's no record of, like, anything being done to the farm. Um, she still owned the farm so because of that she had to pay for the cleanup of the land but like um after that there's nothing like that says what happened to the farm and this was like 20 acres of, of land you know but like i'm sure nobody wants to be living out there i don't know y'all this case is just like poo to me i i don't know I don't know what this lady was thinking. And if you look up pictures of her, she is a special kind of person. Like, I'm not going to pick on somebody's appearance, but like she, like, she fed people to pigs. I keep saying that. Anyway, that's all on Susan Monica. Um, thankfully, she's in jail. I feel bad for her pigs. I feel bad for Robert and for Steve and for all the other men she probably killed. But I feel bad for her pigs. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that this didn't freak you out too much because this one is like so weird. Um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you have a fantastic 